So we have just derived this formula which relates the velocity of p as measured by two frames. The first frame is some E0 frame which we call the observer frame and the other frame is the BFCS of a rigid body. The rigid body has angular velocity omega b as measured by the observer okay? and the BFCS, the origin of the BFCS g moves with velocity vg as measured by the observer. Now let's move on to two applications of this formula. So the first application is a, is a very important application in which we will take two points on the same rigid body and relate their velocities. So let first draw a rigid body. So here is my typical rigid body and let there be two points which I am going to call A and B and rigid body is called denoted by a script B and the rigid body is observed by some observer frame and I am going to draw another observer frame here and this observer frame E0 sees that the rigid body has angular velocity omega b. Usually how do we find the angular velocity of the rigid body? We attach to the rigid body a body fixed coordinate system and we measure the rate of change of the body fixed coordinate system with respect to the observer. The observer also observes that the velocity of point A is Va and the question that we have is find the velocity of point B. So let's go ahead and do that. For this we will be using this formula. So the typical way to solve problems concerning rigid bodies in this course is to identify a point of interest. In this case it will be B. That's the point we want to investigate, find the velocities of and observe its motion in two different frames. One frame is already given to us. The other frame is not really clear right now, but the most natural frame to construct would be the body fixed coordinate system of this rigid body. Okay, So we are going to construct a BFCS, where should we put the origin on? We could put it anywhere, but the most convenient point, the only other point it seems to be is A. So let's go ahead and put the BFCS at point A, call it E1, E2, E3 and call it E. So now we have two frames which I can write down as E0 at O, EI and the BFCS E centered at A given by unit vectors EI which may change with time. So now we have two frames. We could follow the velocity of B in these two frames and when we do that we would be able to use a formula like the one we derived earlier which related the motion of a point P in two different frames. So the two different frames earlier were these E0 and the BS of a rigid body which is very similar to this picture that we have over here. So now what we have to do is identify the various points in this picture with the points in this formula. So it's very clear we are studying the point B. So point B must be P. So let's write that down. So P is B. Okay. The body is called B. It was called B earlier. RPG was the location of the point P with respect to the origin of the BFCS. The origin of the BFCS right now is A. So that means that G must be A. So that RPG becomes RB with respect to A and VG which is the velocity of the origin of the BFCS with respect to E0 now becomes the velocity of the point A as observed in the frame E0. So now all we have to do is rewrite this formula with these identifications. So let's do that. What we will find is Vp, Vv rather, is velocity of the point B measured relative to the BFCS. So let's write that down as Vb rel plus omega b cross r b 
a plus v a all i have done is i have rewritten this formula with these identifications based on this picture to remind you in this picture we are studying the motion of point b sitting in e0 and also sitting in the bfcs attached to the rigid body b okay we are nearly there so let's see so what do, what all do i know so in this formula this is what i am trying to find i know this i know where b is with respect to a okay so that is r b a so that is known i also know v a because that is given so the question becomes what is this well the answer is it must be zero because this is the velocity of b observed in e but in e which is attached which is the bfcs of this rigid body b will appear fixed it's on the same rigid body and he, the bfcs moves and rotates with the rigid body so therefore the final answer that we get is that vb is omega b cross r b a plus b a so there we have it if we know the velocity of a point on the rigid body then the velocity of any other point on the rigid body can be obtained by this formula which is what is the answer that we have over here another way to understand this is that we know the motion of a rigid body completely if we know the velocity of a point any point on the rigid body and its angular velocity the angular velocity of the rigid body so that's another implication of this formula okay moving on the second example that i am going to do is going to be then somewhat of an engineering system so what we have is that we have a coupler which is rotating at uh, the rate omega 0 about the you know about this vertical axis and the coupler is carrying with it a rod of length l and at steady state the rod makes a constant angle theta with the vertical axis and we are supposed to find the velocity of the rod's end so let's go ahead and solve this problem so what i have done is i have copied this figure onto the right over here and i have drawn various coordinate systems let me walk you through them the first coordinate system is the red coordinate system which is the fixed coordinate system centered at g i could have centered it somewhere else also it doesn't matter this is the most convenient and this you will get with some experience in problem solving the second coordinate system is the green coordinate system which is attached to the rotating coupler so clearly the green coordinate system would be seen to be rotating about e3 the third coordinate system is the blue coordinate system which is attached to the rod so let me write down these coordinate systems so the first coordinate system is e0 centered at g with unit vectors ei so let's label it so this is e0 the green coordinate system let's label this to be e prime and the blue coordinate system is as usual e the other coordinate system the green one is e prime it is centered at c right here and its unit vectors are ei prime and the final coordinate system the bfcs of the rod is e it is also centered at c and its unit vectors are ei so we can also write down based on our experience with rotating coordinate systems how these coordinate systems are related so for example you can go from e0 to e prime by a rotation rotation the first rotation about capital e3 by some angle phi let's show this angle in the picture it will be this angle phi the next rotation which takes e prime 
to E is given by R2 and that is about E2 prime by the angle theta. So, let us write that down R2 about E2 prime by theta. Okay. What you should immediately know is that theta is fixed, phi is changing with time. So, maybe I can code this up in this picture and we do not get confused later on by making phi a function of time. All right. So, that is the relationship between the various coordinate systems in this picture. We need to find the velocity of point P for which we will use this formula. So, let us copy this formula over here. The first step now is to identify all the points A, B, omega B which occur in this formula with points in this picture. We are interested in the velocity of point P. So, clearly this is the unknown. So, B must be P. A was the name of the point whose velocity was known. Is there any point on this rigid body whose velocity is known? The answer is yes. Clearly it is point C. So, therefore, A is C. What remains now? We know this vector now. R B A must be R of P with respect to C that is it is this vector and this vector we know it is actually equal to L which is the length of the rod and this direction which is E1. So, we can write this as L E1. So, in this formula we know V A we have we know R B A. Do we know our omega b? That is, do we know the angular velocity of this rigid body? The answer is yes, because we have drawn the necessary coordinate systems which take us from a fixed coordinate system to the body fixed coordinate system. So, omega b is the angular velocity of the rigid body and that must be the angular velocity of the body fixed coordinate system with respect to the fixed coordinate system which is the angular velocity of the BFCS with respect to the intermediate coordinate system plus the angular velocity of the intermediate coordinate system with respect to the fixed coordinate system E0. Very good. So, what is this object? This is the angular velocity of the blue coordinate system with respect to the green coordinate system. It is governed by this relationship. This rotation is about E2 prime but the angle of rotation remains fixed. So, if I was to sit on the green coordinate system and look at the blue coordinate system, I will not see it moving at all. That means, this is 0. What about this? The angular velocity of the green coordinate system when observed by the red coordinate system and governed by this relationship in which phi is a changing angle is clearly omega 0 along E 3 prime which is the same as capital E 3. So, I can write this down omega 0 E 3. You will all agree that in fact phi dot must be omega 0. The rate of change of this angle will be the magnitude of omega 0 we are given omega 0 that is why I am retaining omega 0 here. All in all we get omega b to be omega 0 E 3. Putting all of this together we can now write down that the velocity of point P will be the velocity of point C plus omega 0 E 3 which is omega b cross r p c which is l e 1. This is point c. It is at the joint. So, it has no velocity. So, v c is 0. What now we have to do is we can write this out as omega 0 l e 3 cross e 1. 
we need to finally just compute this cross product you can if you are you know energetic enough transform capital e3 into in the small ei coordinates or transform the small e1 into capital ei coordinates but all of that is an unnecessary if you look at this picture this is the direction of capital e3 and this is e1 you can take the cross product of this vector with that vector just geometrically it will involve the angle theta so therefore this is capital e3 and this is small e1 and therefore this is simply omega 0 l sine theta along this direction which in our picture is given by e2 so e2 and now you can think about this intuitively if this rod is rotating like this clearly point p will have a velocity along the tangent which will be parallel to e2 that's what you have got so this is your answer and which is what i have written over there okay so with that we'll end this lecture and mid sems are coming up but you should not panic because after the mid sem life will not end there will be an end sem